There actually were some very interesting results out. Let's go through Udeco and Free World, which is Plascon, you mm-hmm. know, essentially. Very good results. You know, and they are Udeco's an industrial company and and a bit of retail, but an industrial company. Doesn't look bad set of results at all. The Free World they were actually incredibly good set of results, and they just said, within, you know, they just said, where's the slowdown? I mean, the shares up uh, only, I think, two, three percent. Comair shares were up strongly, nine, nine, ten odd, ten odd percent. So there's two get good set of results. Imperial, I didn't think was a bad set of results. However, there are so many prior year adjustments and discontinued operations and unbundled operations. I'm not sure if I'm even analyzing it correctly. It's so, it's so complex. Market, I think Imperial traded slightly down on, on the day. But overall, the market was flat for the day. A little bit of good news on the gold share side. Bad news on the banks, especially APSA. And we'll get that story on. But Nedbank was down as well. Maybe Nedbank, maybe Nedbank's down because now it's the only bank that Left. hasn't disclosed <laughs> single stock future losses. Well, that, that's the thing. And there was a story on Bloomberg quoting somebody from Deutsche Bank saying that this is not going to be the last of these single stock future exposures and probably we're likely to see from the likes of ABSA, I mean from the likes of Nedbank. It's quite possible. Look, How I can big guarantee- is the exposure, do you think? I, I'm amazed by this. Because we're not involved. We've never traded single stock futures. Apparently, we had the biggest single stock futures market in the world. I mean, I didn't even know by this. By number of contracts. Yeah, yeah, by number of contracts. I didn't even know this. So, we, uh, we as a company and, and personally, I've never been involved. So, I didn't know how big this was. And yet, it looks as though it's bringing down major shareholders in companies and just almost, you know, death and destruction out there. And the banks are going to – I mean, the first strand – what did deal stream cost him? Three hundred million, four hundred million? Absa I haven't worked out the numbers, maybe Chris has, but it's roughly it's a one point four billion rand. Yeah, but that's their cost. It's not yes. their losses so far. Sure. But they they will show losses. And in, it looks big, but I can guarantee you, once banks are burnt on something like this, it just doesn't happen again because the banks don't stand in. Because what, what the banks do, in essence, they guarantee the contract. So two, the banks and themselves own the contract necessarily, but they guarantee that the one party will deliver to the other party in terms of the contract. Now, if the one that's going to deliver goes bankrupt, the banks must stand in. And if they see, ooh, I've now lost a good couple of hundred million here, that market just will not exist in a year's time. Mm-hmm. Or in a year, in a month's time, it just won't, it just won't exist. What did you make of the credit numbers? In Exactly as expected. A little bit worse than maybe the market consensus. But we don't need credit numbers or inflation numbers or money supply numbers to tell us the economy is slowing down rapidly. We know this already. I mean, our economy maybe won't hit a technical recession. But our, third, our fourth quarter GDP numbers, when they come out for December, are going to be seriously poor. They'll be like the U.S. here, you know, down 3 4%. Eh? Mm. They, they really will be. So, I mean, the U.S. down... Uh, 3.8%, that's the really big economic news out there. The Dow is down just under 1%, so by and large, everyone knew this as well. You didn't have to wait so for the, the official numbers to come the out. The Dow came out a little bit stronger on the news. I think they were expecting probably, probably 5% down, yeah. yeah. So it did come out a little bit stronger. But markets are struggling to find direction. I, I firmly and still truly believe that the worst is over from a panic point of view and you can just look at the at the actual bank the interbank rates in london they are significantly better than what they were october november last year yet the markets are not doing anything They're up one week down the next week and despite what you think whether there's value in our market or not whether our market's cheap or global markets are cheap or not just some days you think it's going to go back and test that low at eighteen thousand on our old share again and it could easily happen